Hey guys, welcome back to IGTV. I haven't done one of these for ages and I've got to do more of them. So this is a bit of a kick up the ass for myself. But um, what I want to talk about today is just, uh, I've done a lot of, um, of the counseling coaching sessions over the last few weeks and there are two recurring themes that have been pretty much every single client I have, um, every single conversation with clients or potential clients I have, these two things come up again and again and again. So I feel like it's probably worth talking about because it's so consistently through um, people like us um, that they deal with these things. And and, I, and maybe just um, I'll give you, you know, how I think that I try and deal with those things in myself, right? So the two things, the two themes that are kind of consistently through everyone I speak to who either works in small business or um, in the entrepreneurial spa- uh, sphere or, um, you know, the creators or, or whatever, they're, they're the people who I tend to tend to work with more than anyone else. And the two things that come through within that group all the time is worrying what everybody else thinks about them, anybody else, somebody else thinks about them. <laughs> and secondly... Just that concentration of, I am not good enough. What if I'm not good enough? Um, and, it, and it all comes back to this underlying kind of groundswell of self-belief or a, a lack of self-belief. And I always think it's really ironic that the people who <laughs> seem to not believe in themselves, in ourselves very much, are the people who are actually doing creative and innovative shit. You know, like if somebody is just cruising their way through life and they're not actually pushing themselves out of any sort of comfort zones and stuff and they just have, you know, and, and that's fine. That's, that's, that's their existence. Good for them. You know, that's their life. Good for them. But, you know, they don't seem to be as troubled with the, oh, what if everyone thinks I'm silly? What if everyone thinks this is shit? What if no one buys it? Stuff. As people who are actually contributing in a way that they're creating these products, they're selling themselves and their, and their, and their products and services to the world. And they, they do, that's a very real thing about whether they they might sell something or, or nothing, you know? So I just think it's ironic that the people who are actually creating the stuff are under the pressure of, oh, what if I create something shit? And then the people who don't seem to be you know, living a life of creation and stuff like that, like uh, they're less inclined to be concerned about it. So uh, I think it comes down to three things, right? And and this is as much with me as as anybody else. I have not worked this shit out, right? For for myself, let me just say. But I feel like the first thing is related to what will everyone else think? What will somebody else think? What if somebody else thinks it's silly? What if somebody else thinks I'm shit? What if the imposter syndrome is, is real or whatever in my head? And the, and the thing that I sort of stress m- more than anything else it, to myself when I feel this is, yeah, but does it matter, right? I, I can hear these people saying these things. I can hear that person saying that thing, whatever. But does it really matter what they think? Do they really matter? Uh, you know, are they going to change the course of what I do? Are they even going to buy my shit in the first place? Like, are they even my target market? And I feel like if I chip away at those things, then it makes creating and being creator of these things a lot, lot easier. If I'm only trying to make things for a certain type of people, or worse, if I'm trying not, if I'm really hoping that somebody doesn't engage with me because they might be critical of it, fuck, that's, that's instant, instant product suicide, right? And business, small business suicide. I'm not trying to create something for everyone. I'm trying to create someone for the people who I really know who are going to be uh, accepting of it. They're going to take on my shit. They're going to listen. They're going to teach me as well. Um, And and it's going to be great. It's going to be a good community, right? And those fringe dwellers, well, (laughs) they're not my people. And, uh, you know, there's 7 billion fucking people. I I don't want everyone. You know, I don't. And so if I find people who are one of those um, people who aren't bringing to the table anything positive or aren't reinforcing me in any way, then I go and find one of the other 7 billion. You know, I'm, I'm just, 
I'm tired of it. Second thing is, I think that people who create shit and people who put themselves out there and say, this is what I feel, this is what I think, this is what I do, um, I think you can get some value from it, whatever it might be, then I think those people have big minds. And I think the people who sit in their room in the dark and type in Facebook comments that are just fucking mean and not helpful and, and are completely anonymous, they have small minds. And I think also, unfortunately, so much of the social construct and the political construct around us at the moment is controlled and populated by people with small minds. And I don't understand why people with big minds feel themselves controlled by those with small minds. Uh, it's two different people, right? And, and I'm not going to... If someone with a tiny little mind can't see the big picture, can't see anything outside of what they've learned or what they've been taught by their parents or by their schooling or whatever, and I bring to the table some new, new way for them to think and they can't handle or they think that it's silly or destructive or, or whatever, and, the, and they just want to cut me down and shoot that hole down with even all that shit down without even thinking about it, then they've got a small mind and that's okay, they're just not for me. And again, I'll go and find one of the other 7 billion people who is for me. And then the third and last one relates to the imposter syndrome. This, this feeling that you're not enough. This feeling that one day they're all going to find out that I don't know what I'm doing. That, you know, I, I, I'm an imposter. That I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fraud. I, you know, whatever it might be. That I'm different, that I think differently, that, that I'm not conforming. And the solution to this, this problem, which has only just sort of come to me in the last few weeks, and I've spoken to a few, few clients about it now too, is I want to celebrate the imposter syndrome. I want to celebrate being the imposter because I feel like, if I feel like an imposter in, in the construct in society, in the way that shit's been built and modelled and is continue to be built and modelled. If I feel like the odd one out here and I'm worried about that, I need to stop worrying about that and start embracing that. Start celebrating the fact that my brain thinks differently. That, that I know, you know, if I can help people think about, or if I can teach my kids, for instance, um, how to think as opposed to what to think, then I'm bringing far more, far more value to life, far more value to my life, far more value to the community potentially, and, and wider beyond that. Because if I just fit in, and if I struggle to conform all the time, then I'm going to have that thought that I'm an imposter. Whereas if I know that I don't fit in, and I'm not trying, I'm no longer trying to conform to shit that I don't believe or support, then I absolutely am an imposter in that society and that's fine. That's okay with me now. So I think there's just a different way, a slightly different way of thinking about it. And you know, I, I talk a lot about you know, reframing the social construct, reframing our minds and, and what we think and what we've always thought. And I think this is a big one for me that I'm, I'm, just, I'm just tired of trying to fit in and trying to quell and squash any desire to be creative and, and different when that's actually my value. That's actually one of the good things that I bring. One of the good things about me. And there's some things that aren't good about me and I'm working on those too. But I want to celebrate the shit that's, that's different about me. And, that, and I really, really want to celebrate the difference that's the things that are different about you. And I can't do that if I'm trying to fit into the construct all the time. I'd love your feedback on this. If you have any questions or comments, please post them. Um, yeah, I just think it's a, it's a good place to start and uh, think about these things about thinking differently. I hope you're having a really great day, wherever you are. And thanks for watching. Have a good one. See ya.